But the craziest thing that was ever said to me, and this guy's like infatuated with me, get your number so I can take it out. I was like, no. He was like, all right, then I'm just gonna rape and kill you then. What? <laughs> what? Didn't know, didn't know, didn't know what you wanted. But you don't even trust yourself. We were so, we were so, we were so high up in love, but not enough to bring us back from where we fell. a bunch of questions that I got on all my different forms of social media on being a correctional nurse. I am a prison nurse and I only work with men. I do get flooded to the women's but that's on occasion when they're very short staffed. So if you guys have any alternative questions definitely leave a comment down below or on my other forms of social media and I'll make sure I answer them because nursing is always talked about a lot of people want to do it but correctional nursing is non-traditional Barely anybody ever talks about it. So this is just like spreading awareness on what I do on a day to day. And because a lot of you are really interested in what I do, especially when I post my day in the life as a correctional nurse when I'm actually in the men's prison. Um, so if you guys have, like I said, any alternative questions, leave a comment down below or on my other forms of social media and I'll make sure to answer them. If you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Mimi. Like I said, I'm a men's correctional nurse. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you can come along with me on all my other shifts. And there's always one more fun to come here. If you guys have been holding it down with me from day one, from me and being in nursing school or the pranks, thank you for sticking it out with me. And if you guys are the ones who is asking me these questions, thanks for asking the questions because a lot of people don't know. And it might sound like a silly question, but if you don't know, then probably other people want to know that question as well. So come along with me on my Q&A and hope you enjoy it. Okay, one question I actually get a lot. Um, why did I go into corrections? And it's funny because my first day of nursing school, you know, in the orientation, you're introducing yourself like the icebreakers. They're like, what do you want to do? I said, I want to work in corrections. Everybody just looked at me like I was crazy. Like I had 10 heads. Um, it's not talked about it. Like I said, it's non-traditional. I wanted to work in corrections because I grew up in the foster care system and a lot of my family and friends were getting locked up. So I felt like a lot of things were missed and people were not treated with respect yes i get it you're in prison you did a crime you're doing the time i get that but that does not mean that somebody doesn't deserve dignity substance use it's not like they were going to do all these horrible crimes they got pulled over for you know things like that um and a lot of times people are forced into situations or they're in and i do have some people who are in the wrong place at the wrong time and they're still getting charged for that because as an adult, you know better. So don't judge people who are in prison. Yes, some people do horrific crimes. But also, as a correctional nurse, typically we do not know people's charges unless it's like a rumor going around, unless it's like big in the news. Because I'm in a prison, I'm not in county jail. So unless it was like a big news thing, we really don't know why they're there. So I'm not really there to judge. Sometimes inmates do tell me like why they're there. And I'm just like, Maybe you should like sit down when you get out and not do any of that. But yeah, that's one thing. So that's why I ended up going to corrections and then men versus women. I work in a men's prison and sometimes I do get it floated to the women's prison when they are short staffed. I do not prefer it because women are typically more aggressive and verbally aggressive and emotional. There's a lot more issues working in a female prison. So like self-harming, emotional dysregulation, family visits. If their kids are in DCF custody, they have the visits with the kids and then they come back and they're really emotional. They're having a lot of hard time dealing with that and then they take it out on one another. So if there's not like a mental health provider on call right at that moment or somebody like a counselor there, they typically take it out on themselves or on somebody else. And that means a lot more paperwork and as a nurse, you're not really helpful in that situation besides getting them the medical attention they need. Um, the men, I am four foot, t and they're typically more aggressive with female nurses than anybody else. I work in men's prison. I am four foot ten. I am not intimidating to them. I am not a threat to them. So I've actually been very lucky, knock on wood, that, I don't even know if that's wood, but that I've not been assaulted. I've not been verbally, verbally abused by the men. I've not really been disrespected at all. Um. 
because like I said, I'm not a threat. They, and a lot of people don't realize as a nurse or a medical provider, the inmates are coming to you for help. So you're not a CEO. You don't really have the like constant strictness and you have to be consistent with the nurse. I mean, consistent with the inmates as a nurse, but you don't have to be strict and like <clears throat> with them, if that makes any sense. Um, so they're coming to you for help. They want to have a, you're like the, really the only real conversation and respect, um, that they're getting in prison. So you typically, you're not really disrespected or abused or anything like that. And also as a woman in prison, in a men's prison, you are typically more protected by the inmates than you would be if you were a male. Perfect example. And this is one of the questions, medical emergencies. Sometimes you go to the medical medical emergencies, you have no clue what you're getting into. And sometimes the scene is not even safe, but you still have to go and do what you need to do. The inmates will be fighting each other, whatever, rioting, blah, 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 but they are working around you. They're not coming at you. And if I tried to get between one of them, which I would not, but if I tried there, because I've seen them do this with CL women um, who are a little taller than me, that they would be swinging over them. They don't push them out of the way. They don't hit them. They don't cuss them out. They're over them. I mean, yes, I've seen women get cussed out, but not, I've never, I don't, a couple of times I've seen it with the medical staff as females, but staff weren't being that respectful. But I would just leave that alone. Um, a day to day, I have day in the lives vlogs that I'm literally in the men's prison. Um, so you can see those on my day to day. Um, so you either, I'm either doing sick call, I'm on clinic visits. Um, so sick call means that an inmate signs up the day before for like if they had a headache or something was wrong with them or they even wanted to talk to a provider or tooth pain and that's we'll see them the next day and assess if we're able to treat it with like over-the-counter medications or treat it right there and then or do they need like a provider um, referral a provider referral like if they had dental pain we're able to put them on a dental protocol means give them over-the-counter medications until the provider is able to meet with them when the provider is able to meet with them we have dentists we have x-rays we have psychiatrists we have um cast tax we have a bunch of services in the prison so typically they don't go out the only reason reason they really go out is if they need like a specialty like if they're getting chemotherapy and stuff like that and then they have to go out in shackles which is another reason why we try our best to keep them in the prison so they don't have to go out in shackles because it's humiliating for them to go out in shackles and like I said, it depends how you really feel about, unless you have somebody you've ever had somebody that you knew in behind bars, it sounds weird when you say it's disrespectful or it's in, like there's loss of dignity and stuff like that. You don't really get it unless you're in that situation. Um, like I said, I get it. People have done crimes, but yeah. Um, how many nurses do I typically work with? So typically it's six on the days, Top, on top of medical providers, then four on the evenings, and then two at night. Um, at night, there's no medical providers. You have to call an on-call doctor. So when you see me doing those medical emergencies, that was one of the questions I have. I've gotten, is there an MA or PA or any providers there? No. It's just the nurses, and worst case scenario, you just call 911 and send them out. Um, like, I've went to stabbings, um, I went to riots, I have broken bones, people attempting to um, overdoses because substances are in prisons. Um, and you really try to do your best clinical judgment. You try to remember what you, do, you learned in nursing school, but you're also not alone. You have a nurse that's with you. And even if you're brand new, you can put your mind together. Also, some of the COs are medically trained. Some are were medics in the prison. Uh, some were medics in the military, and they're able to assist you as well. And some are medically trained, uh, so they would respond to medical emergencies with you. So it's not just you alone. Like I said, worst case scenario, you start CPR, you send it out to the hospital. Um, another question that I've gotten is, people are nervous to go into corrections because they don't have any medical experience. Corrections was my first job. I had no medical experience besides the med surge that I did in nursing school, and I still don't have medical experience. Will I go to like med surge or the ED? I don't know. 
Um, but I watch YouTube videos and I continue to try to educate myself on different medical situations that could occur in a prison. Um, and typically those are more trauma related or seizures are a big one and respiratory. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, that's basically it. Traumas, seizures, and respiratories are the main ones that you get um, called to. <clears throat> Substance use. People do sometimes go into alcohol withdrawals if they, um, sometimes we get like overflow from the county and then you just treat them, you know, accordingly to whatever the protocol is for that. Um, do I fear for my safety? I have never actually feared for my safety. Um, and I, also in situations like medical emergencies, like being in a riot, lockdowns and stuff like that, you're not really thinking, your adrenaline is rushing. And you're not thinking about that situation. Also, I grew up in a very chaotic environment. Um, so I think I'm also used to chaos. If you are a very quiet, anxious person, you could try corrections. But sometimes it's steady and sometimes it's a lot of medical emergencies. And typically at the beginning, around the holidays, when there's a lot of holidays coming, you get a lot of me more more. You get a sorry, like you get a lot more medical emergencies because a lot of rivalries are coming in to the prisons because of different situations that are happening. So you get different gangs that come in at the same time. Um, like I said, typically those are around the holidays, which is why I've had so many medical emergencies on those day of the lives. Um, <clears throat> and the day of the life that you saw with all the blood, that was actually a shank gang. Um, phones in the jail. I get this all the time. Um, and this is why I posted it, pinned it on my TikTok because I get it all the time. Long story short, we can just have them. We can. Um, there was not, there's not really a policy on the phones besides you can't have it in the medical, I mean, you can't have it on the unit. Our medical clinic is not connected to the inmate pods. So you have like the clinic and then you have the inmates pods around you and then maximum where all the high profile people are over here i actually have not been in that one yet i don't even know if they have they might have their own medical staff there because i've never seen them come out um like walking around the courtyard and stuff so that yeah i wonder if they have their i'm pretty sure they have their own medical providers there because we don't even get calls for medical emergencies there um but yeah, those are like the high, high profile people that I don't even know who's back there. Well, I do, but some of them. Um, worst thing I've ever seen. Like I said, I came from a chaotic environment. Um, I mean, like I said, I've seen stabbings. You apply pressure. Um, yeah, I've seen like stabbings. People trying to um, harm themselves. But yeah, nothing like crazy. I think like Depends what you call scary. It depends what you call scary or uncomfortable. Because, like, I see people flash me, and that was, like, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable what you consider scary. The worst thing somebody would probably consider scary is a stabbing. Um, and there you just really apply pressure. And, like I said, worst case scenario, you send them out to the hospital. That's what you do. So, I don't know. Um, sexual harassment by COs or inmates. Um, I've never actually been sexually harassed by an inmate and like I said the flashing that was actually my fault because it was my first day And I'm walking through like the courtyard and somebody was like hey, so I looked up because like the, their like basketball courts are And their pods are like fourth floor or whatever So I just happened to look up so because I heard a and I was walking with another nurse and as I looked She said don't look and I was already looking and she was like and then whoo there you go. You see it um and then she was like, I was surprised I didn't tell you that before. Anytime somebody calls you A or calls you, just don't look. If they really need you, somebody will call your name or call a medical emergency. Never look. Like I said, that's only happened to me once. Um, typically, that doesn't happen because they go into segregation for 48 to 72 hours after that. So it's really not worth it. If they're really doing it, it's in their own cell. So, yeah. With COs. COs will flirt with any... No, I'm not going to say that. Um, I've seen CEOs flirt with people while they are, the CEO is married. Um, happens a lot with medical staff. I've seen a lot with CEOs. 
Um, I don't ever date a CEO. And never look, don't ever be inappropriate with an inmate. And the reason I said it is because in orientation, they're like one in four of you will be inappropriate, sexually inappropriate with an inmate or be in a compromising situation. I'm looking like it's going to be you because it's not going to be me. And sure enough, it actually happened. I've had probably about six people that I know that I work with have been inappropriate with this inmate to the point they are no longer there. Um, and always know you can you will spend five years in federal prison if you are with an inmate. So really think, is it worth it? You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your credibility, your house, your job, whatever, um, to be with the inmate. And don't think they won't tell because, one, there's cameras everywhere. And, two, the first time you say no to them, they're selling. And they will have proof. And no matter what, they will believe an inmate because we have something called PREA. So, like, even if an inmate is with an inmate, there's the Persian Rape Act. And inmates cannot consent while they are behind bars. So... Always remember in the back of your head, is it worth it? If you find them attractive, fine, you find them attractive. But don't do anything with them. Just look at them and go on about your business. Because you do not want to waste your whole life for that. And I think, I don't know what the time limit is about being with the inmate after they release, but always remember, so most times you don't know why they're in there. So you might be getting with somebody that will end up taking your life and or beat you or something and they're there for a reason not all the time but most people just assume that I'm Jamaican which I'm fine with because I don't tell my co-workers my co-workers have no clue and the inmates don't know that I speak Spanish for the reason is one I don't want anybody getting me asking me to translate because I'm not a formal translator I do not have a license to translate so whatever that would not be legal and I don't want to take out the time of my day for helping you because I have a bunch of other crap that I have to do and so do you and also I don't want you to be like oh well she said this or they said this and it got misconstrued or something to the point I'm in trouble and also if you if the inmates are laughing and I start laughing and we're speaking on another language you might think that there's something inappropriate going on so I'm not trying to compromise myself in any way possible so you can call a translator Another reason why I don't want an inmate to know is because I don't want them to feel like having a conversation with me in Spanish when all my other um, English-speaking co-workers are there because, like I said, I don't want anything to get misconstrued and they think something's going on. Um, and also, I don't want to know if you talk about me because some of the Spanish people that I work with, they be talking about people, I be listening, and I know who's sleeping with who, but I want to know if you're going to talk about me. And you would never know because most people get fooled by the color of my skin. Or because they know that I was not raised here. But, yeah, I don't I don't tell them. And also being a black person in a prison. I mean, I have people call me like, hey, sis, I'm not your sis. I'm your nurse. What can I help you with? Because, um, like I said, I don't want anything miscommunicated. Phones in prison. Going back to that. So, we have phone jammers. So, even if a person stole my phone um they can't use it unless you log into the, your computer and they you use the we have like barcodes on the back of our phone if you want to bring your phone in so all they do when you're going through is they scan it um and that's how they know if it's your phone or not if you get your phone taken or stolen or whatever and they're able to scan it then you can get it back because you checked your phone and you've been doing what you need to do i don't honestly know what would happen if an inmate stole your phone I, don't, I, I mean, yes, you'd have to have an incident report, but you get an incident report if you come in one minute late for work. One minute late, you have an incident report. And nothing happens. It just goes on your record. Um, but if somebody takes your phone, it's not like they can really use it for anything besides pictures because every time you log into your computer, you will get your code that you, you have to use for your Wi-Fi. So, like, if I needed to look up a mat or something like that, I'll use the Wi-Fi because I can't use the phone because it has a jammer and also there's a limited thing that you can use on the Google that are on our computers which is another reason why I think they give you the ability to utilize your phone um, somebody actually met, commented on my TikTok saying they're allowed to use Apple watches too um, there's not really anything we can't bring in the prison I mean we can't bring st metal silverware I know that for a fact in cans I brought a cannon before but I didn't get in trouble I didn't get caught but yeah Cans or metal silver because you can use it as a weapon. Um, we don't have to wear 
clear beds, which some people have said they have before. Um, uniforms, there is no real uniform. I have my piercings, I show my tattoos, um, cause I have like one on my arm. I have my nose pierced. Um, if I was a male, I cannot wear orange as a nurse or a medical provider because the inmates wear orange. If I was working in the female prison, I cannot wear um, maroon, but I barely float there. And if I do get floated there, I already know that. So then I would not be wearing my maroon. I wear hoodies, hair. There's no hair requirement besides you can't have exotic colors. Sometimes there's COs with you when you're doing your assessment. Sometimes there's not. Really depends. I mean, I have people that are infatuated with me, like obsessed with me, which is why they don't know my name. Um, but, uh, I, with them, I will typically have a CO at the door because I don't, I don't know what they want to do. Like, they'll, <laughs> they'll say some crazy things and I'm like, what? <laughs> Get them. Um, the, the craziest thing I've ever had said to me was, they're like, uh, can I have your number so I can call you and take you out? And I was like, no. The craziest thing that has ever been said to me, and you might consider this scary, but nobody knows who I am. I don't live in the same county that I work in. I live far away. So I was, I don't really think much of it. But the craziest thing that was ever said to me, and this guy's like infatuated with me. Um, he, he came for a medical, um, sick call. <laughs> he was like, let me get your number so I can take you out. I was like, no. He was like, all right, then I'm just going to rape and kill you then. What? <laughs> what? So I was like, CO, get him out. So he ended up going to segregation, whatever. Long story short, I was like, what is he in for? That's what he was in for. Bro, I was like, is he, was, I didn't know. I'm like, is he playing or what? But that's what he was in for. So long story short, never know any, never let anybody know anything about you at all. I have a common last name, so it's not like they would be able to find me. And I have a common first name, so. And you're going to be looking in the wrong spot because I do not work where I live. Nowhere near, so you would not be finding me. Um, but yeah, guys, if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below on my other forms of social media if I forgot anything. Um, thank you for those who have reached out to me. And yeah, so I'll do another Q&A if you guys have alternative questions as well.